It very logically has a destructive effect on our relationships. We compete because we are raised that way, not because we're born that way. I mean, take for example the belief in survival of the fittest, which is seen as a Darwinian notion. In fact, Charles Darwin never even used the phrase uh, survival of the fittest. That was coined by a um, right-wing social thinker in the 19th century named Herbert Spencer, who tried to corrupt Darwin's thinking to his own reactionary political purposes. What Darwin talked about was natural selection, which means that the individual organism that's best able to adapt to a changing environment is more likely to be around to survive and reproduce. But that doesn't specify competition as a mechanism. In fact, often the active avoidance of competition, if not the deliberate uh, pursuit of cooperative strategies, turns out to make it more likely that organisms and entire species will survive. The research consistently shows that competition not only isn't necessary for excellence, but tends to impede excellence on most tasks. And the more challenging the task, the more ingenuity, problem-solving skill it requires, uh, the more competition tends to disrupt uh, that achievement. Excellence pulls in one direction and competition pulls in another. And in fact, another kind of research study corroborates that. If you take a whole bunch of people and give them a task to do, some kind of problem to work out, and half of them are told, see if you can figure out how to do this task. And the other half are told, this is a contest with a prize to whoever wins, whoever does the best job. Study after study after study across cultures, across gender, across ages, uh, find that uh, the people who compete, who have to compete, end up doing an inferior job on that task. At the moment, it appears uh, as though much of what happens in schools in North America is really for the convenience of people who have most of the power. There is, if anything, an act of discouragement of critical questioning. Corporations claim they want kids who are able to think outside the box, but only so far as they're caught within a larger box that works to the advantage of the free market, um, which means that the market economy based on competition, based on economic rather than human considerations, uh, ends up controlling the system. Today, many people assume that antisocial and even violent behavior by young people is a completely natural phenomenon. Yet anthropological studies reveal this to be a myth. Our widespread use of the term juvenile delinquency exposes not only the failure of modern schooling, but of an important concept given expression by the behaviorists. They called it the frustration-aggression hypothesis. The frustration-aggression hypothesis was an attempt by behaviorists at Yale to combine their own science of behavior with that of the Freudians. Simply put, when people perceive that they are being prevented from achieving just rewards, their frustration is likely to turn to aggression. This study by the behaviorist Hobart Maurer showed that when rats could not achieve their expected reward, they began to take out their frustrations on each other. The scientist notes that two animals which have lost their hold on the pellet, frustration, will be seen to turn on each other, displaced aggression. Similarly, in a 1941 experiment, toys were placed behind a wire screen where children could see but not touch them. When they eventually gained access to the toys, their play became considerably more destructive. On the one hand, human beings are not rats. Armed with the necessary information, we can come to a logical conclusion about who is to blame for our frustrations in life. Rightly or wrongly, we often point the finger squarely back at ourselves, Yet in the hands of politicians and demagogues, frustration aggression can be a potent tool in deflecting anger onto scapegoats. They want to throw white children and colored children into the melting pot of integration, out of which will come a conglomerated, mulatta, 
mongrel fight for people. We are the Ku Klux Klan. We hate niggers, we hate Jews, we hate faggots, and we hate specks. We kill the faggots, we kill the lesbians. I said, God damn it, we kill them all. We kill the elder crackers, the old crepit crackers in South Africa. How in the hell you think they got old? They got old oppressing and killing black people. I'm not going to discuss it. If he says murder gets murdered, if a murderer gets murdered or, or slain, capital punishment, that's fine with me. Line them up and we'll clean up our nation overnight. Start with the abortionists. Might as well get rid of a few of those beasts. I'm so sick of them. I'm so sick of the brainwashing about Islam and Muslims and the Koran. Shove it. Shove it all. I'm sick of it. Get, get, take the music off. These throwbacks think they're better than you underneath it all, and 90% of them are on welfare. Speak it out at the supermarket. Tell them what you think of Islam. Tell them what you think of Muslims. We're talking about illegal immigration. So now in addition to venereal disease and the other leading exports of Mexico, women with mustaches and VD, now, now we have swine flu. And when you scoop up some of the world's lowest of primitives in poor Mexico, and drop it down in the middle of the United States, poor, without skills, without language, not sure our culture, not sure our hygiene, haven't been vaccinated. Look at all the things we take for granted. It's millions of leeches from a primitive country come here to leech off you. I don't know what happens tonight, and I don't know why. Also, the gay agenda and Harry Potter. Professors, the 101 most dangerous academics in America, and that's just a short list of the uh, 30, 40,000 of them. They're like termites that have worked into the woodwork of our uh, academic society, and it just appall it's appalling. Scapegoating. And, uh, and the hope is that, that by deflecting the anger of people, which might be directed against the system itself, deflecting the anger against these other people, uh, the system would save itself. In, uh, in the South, the black people became scapegoats. And you directed the anger of white people, poor white people in the South were the people who joined the Ku Klux Klan. These poor white people might have rebelled against the governments of the South and against the national government, but no, they were told that black people were the source of their problem. heavily armed, immediately started shooting everybody. It was a local man dressed in battle fatigues who declared, I have killed a thousand, I'm going to kill a thousand more. 41-year-old James Huberty reportedly walked into the restaurant carrying a semi-automatic rifle and two other weapons, enough ammunition to last two hours. Witnesses inside said he fired wildly into the unsuspecting crowd, gathered for a quick evening meal. He fired through windows, hitting people in the street. He fired at men, women, children, and babies. Bullets fly, leaving a local family scared to be in their own home. Tonight, investigators say hate was driving the man who pulled the trigger. Deputies say last month, someone opened fire on the Hashems because they're Muslim. And I need to know who hates us that much, who's, you know, who wants us to, to, to die. Authorities in California are urging Jewish schools and temples to stay alert following a shooting at a synagogue in L.A. The attack happened in the same area of Bushwick where another Hispanic immigrant was killed. Vera left a food pantry here at his church in Lower Manhattan carrying his groceries. He biked across the Williamsburg Bridge and into Bushwick, where police say he was allegedly struck in the head, then thrown off his bike as three black males yelled anti-Mexican slurs. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the two attackers shove and punch Jack Price, the openly gay victim, now in a medically induced coma. The attack accelerates, with both suspects flailing their arms at the helpless 49-year-old. There was utter pandemonium outside the university building as ambulances carted away the injured. Police have now confirmed 14 students dead, all women. Another dozen people were hurt, caught in a rampage that witnesses called a human hunt, with the gunman yelling, I want women. There's an interesting perspective that comes out of 
many studies in psychiatric anthropology which suggest that uh, mental illness is not just a standardized uh, in varying thing like like diabetes for example diabetes is always the same wherever you are in the world but uh, mental illness seems to take different forms once a person takes leave of reality once a person abandons the ship of fools the uh, the form that the psychosis takes is often dictated or at least shaped by the dominant culture uh, so thus for example in uh, traditional Ojibwe society where there was a belief that, that once a person went insane this is the Wendigo psychosis that uh, he or she might eat human flesh and thus a proportion of people who feeling that they've left reality uh, no longer feeling control begin to act out the particular form of psychosis that their culture is aware of. Multiple murderers tend to differ from the conventional single murderers. The, uh, the ordinary murderer is very uniform everywhere in the industrial world. He's uh, very much a bottom of the working class figure. He's addicted to drugs or alcohol. He has no education or professional qualifications. This is the sort of person who, in a fit of rage, kills a friend or a lover. The multiple murders are a little different. Uh, they tend to be more edging towards the middle class in their origins and in their aspirations. And a, a part of the, their agenda, of their motivation, is, is that uh, they devoutly wish to join a higher class but come to feel excluded. In the case of James Huberty, the mass murderer who killed more than a dozen people in that long siege at the McDonald's in San Diego. Uh, Hubert used to stare from his uh, apartment across the street at McDonald's, which was filled with uh, Mexican immigrants who were seizing control of the, this fundamental institution, he thought, of, of American society, who were able to go there and afford to eat when he couldn't. I tried to argue in a succession of books that these kinds of killers, while well, their acts are deranged and insane, what they, they themselves are not necessarily so. Rather, they are alienated individuals who wish to end their life in a way that allows them to release their grudge against society for their perceived exclusions. Multiple killers may be statistically rare, but I've tried to argue that they represent central cultural themes. They embody many of the main ideas in, in, in their culture, uh, not only the glorification of violence and manly vengeance, but worldly success and worldly ambition, which uh, they feel they've been foiled in. So they're a prime embodiment of their civilization, not a twisted derangement of it. I've also tried to argue that this fundamentally rebellious rather than revolutionary cast to what they're doing, these ghastly killings they perpetrate, uh, are relatively ignored by uh, government institutions charged with regulating society. Uh, they typically pay much more attention to political, real political dangers and spend much less time and energy and money monitoring uh, this small group of killers. Now, I don't believe personally that the answer to psychopathy is to be found in brain-altering chemicals to change the nature of our society in that artificial way. I think what we ought to start to doing is teaching people about the dignity and value and the sacredness of human life and teaching people how to behave towards one another. The important thing to understand, however, is while it's interesting to look in, into the nature of modern society and see its fissures and fractures and stresses through uh, multiple murderers, it should not be considered that these are the primary killers. Governments and politicians are the main killers. Indeed, some, some uh, scholars have argued that the state's primary function is as mass murderer to wage war on other states.